Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Minecraft update video. If you are not aware, the Caves and Cliffs update is being split into two parts. You need to go and see the previous snapshot video if you are not aware, so you can understand what I'm talking about here. This is, however, snapshot 21W16A, and what's interesting is that we're going to see parts of both 1.17 and 1.18. And not only that, in this video, we are going to take a sneak peek look at something from Bedrock Edition, which might be a new type of underground biome involving ice and snow. That'll come up later on in the video. Right now, though, I wanted to answer a question that I have some confirmation on. Sadly, the Skulk Sensor isn't going to be a part of 1.17 in survival mode. It'll be available in Creative but you won't be able to get your hands on this in the survival game. What's also interesting is that the new ways of getting things in survival, instead of getting them from the caves, will be removed when 1.18 comes around. And it's in this snapshot that we get to see some of that. So yes, Mo Young have been listening to the community and answering our questions. Another big one was about the deep dark. It is indeed going to be a biome and not a new dimension as some of you have been hoping for. So let's get into this snapshot's changes for 1.17, which is in regards to getting certain materials and features that we've seen so far in the update without the caves down below. And so the azalea and flowering azalea can now create a tree using a bone mill. It usually takes just a couple of attempts to, uh, to grow one. You're probably wondering if it can grow naturally. Well, as you'll see here, I've got the game tick speed turned up quite fast. And yeah, these have been here for a few minutes and none of them have grown naturally. So it's both types of these that can be bone milled. And an important observation to make here is that underneath it, it will then create rooted dirt. So that is also a way to get your hands on that material as well as these trees and of course the leaves. And the tops of these blocks are flat, which means in the dark that mobs will be able to spawn on them. However, in this snapshot, that's been changed. So these will now be non-spawnable blocks. And maybe if you've got a colorful room in your house, this might actually make a cool floor in a dark room. Now you might want to decorate that with some dripstone. And this means you're gonna to need to get your hands on pointed dripstone, which is now going to be farmable. You can kind of see it in action in front of us right here. This process, though, is incredibly slow. I've actually sped the world up by 300 times in order to get this stuff growing. And so with the pointed dripstone, you can obviously then craft that into dripstone blocks. So the trick here is that we have some water at the top, then we have these dripstone blocks below, and then we've got the pointed dripstone, and it creates a dripping effect which allows this to grow both at the top and the bottom. So if I'm to come over here and punch some of these out, what you're gonna see is that they start growing again when the drips land on this surface. Now from the bottom of one of these tips to a dripstone block down below, the distance is 10 blocks. If it's further than that, then it's not gonna create one at the bottom. But one of the things this will do is actually grow downwards so you can have a larger gap uh, between the both of them and you know if this looks fast remember I've turned the game speed up by like 300 times now over on this side you'll see that I've been experimenting with different combinations of blocks above and below and it seems that it's only on the dripstone block itself that this can work but when we swap things around you can see that it's actually possible for the dripstone to drop onto any block type and then start growing it. So in order for this to work you need the dripstone block at the top but to grow them at the bottom you can use any type of block. That being said, you know, not any type. It doesn't work on slabs and probably other blocks that aren't whole. Also I love doing this and then watching them all drop. Very satisfying. And lastly, it should be noted that if the top or the bottom of these blocks are waterlogged, then it's not going to grow the stalagmite. So you can't be doing this growing technique underwater. And a reminder of what I said earlier, these ways of obtaining these materials are subject to change in the second part of the update. So they might be gone when 1.18 drops. And last of all, for changes related to 1.17, we've had a texture update for some of the raw ore blocks and the raw ore items. And I'll put the side by side comparison on your screen. As you can see, the changes are rather subtle. And so now we get a preview of some of the changes coming in 1.18. And this is achieved using data packs and Mojang have released a new one, the Caves and Cliffs preview. So we're gonna load this up and jump into this world. So the data pack is loaded. We have our deep underground caves. And whenever I move, 
lag spikes like really big bad lag spikes this is this is not good so this is probably a good opportunity for me to make a bit of a public service announcement many of you are probably wondering how you're going to handle the transition from 1.17 to 18 now if you're going to use this data pack i've had it confirmed from moyang you will most likely run into troubles and probably regret using it so if you plan on playing in a 1.17 world with the data pack you should make a new one when going to 18. If you're going to play without the data pack, then your transition to 1.18 should be smooth. There shouldn't be any funkiness with chunk borders in the world and everything should update as normal. So what we are seeing here are the changes for the 1.18 update. And this is a lava aquifer. And we've already seen these for water. These are large bodies of water or lava that generate underground. And here you're seeing the lava. And I like this example because it spills out into a cave. And this right here is just some fantastic generation. So I thought I was able to fix the lagginess for a moment there. But look, it's it's back. I assigned more RAM to the game, but the lag spikes, yep, they're still happening. So I was really excited to check out this next feature, ore veins, in the game. But we're going to have to resort to Twitter, unfortunately. And Henrik here is teaching us how we can spot a large ore vein and there are two different types first of all we have one that generates with iron and tuft around it as well so whenever you spot those two together it's the sign of one of these ore veins they are quite deep and large underground and then you see them intersect with the surface as i said the other type was copper and this usually generates with granite around it so those are the tell telltale signs of these ore veins. Now Henrik has shared another tweet with us right here which is absolutely mind blowing. So they basically removed everything out of the world except mine shafts and these ore veins. So if we have a closer look right here you can see that these things will be absolutely massive. Once you spot this combination of blocks in your world you'll be able to explore it and dig away for ages and get tons of these materials. There was also another screenshot shared inside of discord on the minecraft discord and here you can see another example of these ore veins yeah it's a pretty big deal and as i understand it they simply generate above y0 but remember down here in the deep underground it goes below y0 now so anyway zero and above is where you find the ore veins now quickly breezing over the technical changes if you have a server resource pack and you set it to mandatory, it will reshow the prompt to use the resource packs to players who had permanently rejected it. The statistic for playtime was renamed to play underscore time. And there is a new statistic called total world time. This one will count the time when the game is paused and you have it open. Now I'd also like to quickly update you on last week's snapshot where I didn't show the ram attack on the creepers or the player or any other mobs or the armor stands. And that's because this attack is actually really quite rare it takes a long time to see it in action so this time i'm going to stick around a little bit longer we just saw it happen twice and a third time there yeah you really need to spam these in to see it in action because it's quite rare and what you probably noticed is that the creeper didn't explode so if the ram attacked a creeper and it blew up a part of your world that would be you know griefing basically and we don't want that by design and also there is evidence that these goats attack armor stands because they've actually been moved about. So this means that they don't technically destroy them, at least not straight away. And therefore they can move them around in the world, which could probably lead to some quirky mini game mechanics. That's what I reckon. And there are also some new sounds added for the goat as well. The one that I found uh, most interesting was prepare ram and then ram impact. So you've got a sound that kind of shows you that they're about to attack. There's also a variant for the screaming goat as well. <laughs> yeah, those are pretty funny. And so my friends, we are now inside of Bedrock Edition of the game where we may have a little bit of a preview of something new. Now it's not known if this is intentional or not, but where Bedrock has mountains, the caves that generate below them and now have ice and snow in them which actually look really fantastic so the shape of this one right here is super interesting it's not the biggest but as you can see there is a frozen lake down here at the bottom and i really like this terrain generation so around this giant mountain there are several cut-ins here is another one and this one's fantastic because it goes on for quite a ways and you can see it generates with lots of snow and then as we get deeper and further in it starts to change to have ice on the sides 
which looks seriously cool and ice on the floor as well and that orange tint right there comes from this lava which looks a little bit strange but again down here like frozen water levels so it is not known if this is intentional or not but wouldn't this be a fantastic way to add another type of cave biome i mean look at this one right here it's bonkers it's got a tree generating in it as well and i think that mo yang should keep this it's so very very cool and it would add yet another reason to come and explore the mountains because the cave generation down here is just fantastic so let me know what you think with a comment down below and ah in your face <laughs> while you're down there be sure to leave a like on the video it helps support the channel so thanks for doing that Last of all we have bug fixes and as you can see there are quite a lot of them as we get prepared for a major release so let's go over the key ones I thought worth mentioning. And a lot of these were related to statistics so for using fireworks the one that you use with the elytra will now be counted. And the used elytra statistic wasn't working properly I'm going to guess that's because this item doesn't disappear when it hits zero and so now it's probably going to count when it gets down to its last little bit. Also, the in-game statistics found right here were not tracking the use of TNT when ignited with flint and steel. And having a GUI open could prevent you from learning a new recipe or achieving an advancement. And mobs are supposed to be now more intelligent and not pathfind over lava cauldrons. That is one pushing another. That one definitely just walked in. This is supposed to be fixed because they can be ignited by this. Okay, yeah, so that hasn't been fixed then. And of course, there were lots more, but those were the ones that I thought were really useful. And it brings us to the end of this video. So, um, yeah, make sure you subscribe if you want to keep up to date with all the 1.17 and 18 news. That is it from me this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.